Hi everyone, I'm going to go through a little walkthrough today of this shot of Harriet that I took well over a year ago um, as she was ready to go to Japan. I've just gone through all the selects within Lightroom and I've finalised an idea I want to do and it's going to be using this image that you can see on the screen here. This dress was all custom made for her, as were the wings. I will drop the designers down in the comments section below, uh, well, in the description box, so you can actually you know, check them out. I'm just using the pen tool and very loosely drawn around Harriet. So I am being quite quick and not as precise as what I normally would. However, this image is just going to be used for social media um, for self-promotion for Harriet. So in terms of having it absolutely perfect, it's not necessary because the larger size it will be seen is predominantly on phones, on laptops. So, you know, we've got a bit of leeway here. My screen keeps freezing during this uh, recording. <laughs> um, so just drawing around the dress. As you can see, there are some transparent parts. I'm not too fussed on how I'm drawing around these at the moment and the feathers at the bottom. I just need a general shape of these and we can play around with transparency of these edges further on. But as you can see, there is a lot of drawing around. Ideally, I would like to use the selection button um, for just selecting Harriet, but it, it's not quite ideal because the colours are quite similar background tones. And I'd spend equally as much time working on that. So I've just dropped in a background from Adobe stock. And um, again, not working too much on the details yet. I'm just bringing in all the stock images that I've got purposely for this and dropping them in. And just, I'm gonna make them all fit. I did do a little PSD of this idea and sent it to Harriet just to get the okay. There's going to be a little bit of a glow. I'm just using the gradient tool just to add that behind her. As you can see, all my layers, pretty much the background is in one folder. And I'm just bringing some more images in. Just to add a sense of depth and a bit of magic to the shot. So I'm not using the pen tool this time. I'm using the brush tool. I like to draw with these. I've said it before, my background is in illustration, so I find using the tools this way very therapeutic. Um, each to their own. There are different and better ways of doing everything in Photoshop. It's just, you've got to have your own little bit of fun to keep an interest in, don't you? See, using the pen tool again here. Honestly, how I do a selection usually just depends on my mood and what I want to achieve from this. And like I said before, because this is not going to be hugely high res anyway, I can play around so much more with this. But you will notice every single one of my layers will have a layer mask. I do no deleting whatsoever. This is just because if there's any mistakes to fix or to add anything in, remove anything, bring it back, it just makes life so much easier than deleting it. Again, just using the pen tool. It's great watching this at 909% speed. <laughs> it's just like zoom. I don't really work this fast. I wish. I did work pretty fast, but this is unreal. Just bringing my moonstock in here and I'm just playing around with the blender modes because I would like a bit of a glow to it. I also like every the background. It will bring in some edges, but it can work in my favour with this. So I'm just shrinking that glow that was behind Harriet, duplicating it and making another one above the moon images, just so there's a bit of glow in the foreground as well. You know, because the moon does give off light, not much. And I'm just doing a bit of um, curves action here. <laughs> Not an action in action, but me in action. Um, and just dodging in some lighter areas. Harriet has pretty amazing skin, so I haven't even done a retouch on this. 
I'm just coming in, adding a bit more light in some of the areas, just to make her stand out a tiny bit more. And I do this quite a lot, you will notice this in videos. I make a little to-do list, either at the beginning or halfway through, if I don't have time to finish it up on the night. There is the preview shot, if you managed to see that before it went away, um, of the little PSD I'd done of the original idea. So I do these notes as a little reminder to myself um, or for anybody who has hired me to do a job so they can come in and see what still needs doing, but just so they can also get an idea of what I've done so far. It can be incredibly helpful. I just do it on a random new layer, new blank layer. And I do keep that layer as well. So I'm just coming in and fine tuning the moon. That's such a weird sentence. And just clearing up that dark edging. I'm just going to play around with the layer styles. Some of the effects. Just to add a little bit of an outer glow. It's looking a little bit harsh. We just need to soften this down. I could spend hours playing around with these. Out of all these effects, what are your personal favourites? I think I pretty much use the glow for everything. It's a pretty cool effect. In one of my videos that is coming along soon, um, I've actually used some of the effects to have spiders under somebody's skin. Uh, just the rest of the videos, just, it's just taking a little while. I am in the middle of moving house, I pick up the keys soon. So it, it's been all go here. It's why I'm a little bit behind on some videos. And the students come back in about a month of my day job. So it's pretty much all go here. Hence why this quick little walkthrough that I'm doing now. So I'm just refining some of the edges on Harriet here. Before I said there was some transparency to the dress. I'm just coming in with a low opacity brush flows low on it as well and just using my layer mask to just blend it out a little bit. Now I'm just fine tuning getting rid of the plastic straps that are on the arms that are keeping the wings on. It's a pretty cool outfit isn't it? From what I recall Harriet done very well in this competition. She deserves it, she does so much hard work. I'm just making a selection around her hands here, just to tidy up. Again, just some of the outer edges. And I'm just bringing that gradient map in front of her hands and a little bit on her face to add a little bit of a glow on her as well. It's looking pretty cool so far. I'm just going to add a bit of blue tones to the reflections that I've made in the water and also tidy these up as well. Because obviously the reflection even though it's reflecting what's in front of you, we'll still obviously have a colour tone. I'll have the colour tone of water. So I'm just playing around with all of the colours here. This is the fun part. Just doing a little bit of burning, adding a bit more definition, checking my notes. There's the original picture again. I'm looking at it side by side, just seeing what else I have to do. So this is just a ripple that I'm bringing in and I'm just going to overlay it on top of the reflections just to give off an effect that the water is moving. There are several ways you can do this, but for quickness, I've just used this. I'm getting quite a lot of layers here. And I've fallen into the trap of not naming them. It does come in handy if I've got to spend a lot of time on an image, um, like say several days, every layer will get named. But if I'm doing it in one sitting, I will just blast through this. You can normally tell by the thumbnails what's on what layer. Um, but here, yeah, just using the camera roll just to bring a bit more saturation to the colours to make them really pop. But how unreal does she look? 
a little bit of blur. As I've said before, you know I love these blurs because I will use tilt shift lenses and when I did learn photography and what I still use now is large format cameras. So obviously you can get this tilt shift effect on them. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough and hopefully I will be uploading to a regular schedule again soon. Thanks for tuning in. See you later.